Hello, welcome back to the Apocalypse, Vormithrax here, and this is episode number 130 of our Let's Play tutorial for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. And the great Apocalypse Deathmobile loading has finally finished. <laughs> so in between episodes, I did sort the inventory, get it loaded into our Apocalypse Mobile, and it took a long time. Thank God I didn't try to record it. Um, it took a couple of hours of real world time to uh, get this thing sorted and loaded. So uh, be thankful I didn't put you through it. Um, I'm just going to kind of lead you through what the base looks like and what the vehicle looks like. So um, that's the primary thing I did. Uh, we'll just kind of wander around and I'll remind myself. But this is what's left of our piles. I'm just going to leave this stuff here. A uh, bunch of guns that are mostly duplicates. We had multiples of a lot of this stuff. Um, or I never intend to use any of it, so we're just going to leave all that behind. Uh, I did unload most of the magazines on ammo. Uh, then we've got some tools, also almost all duplicates, nothing too exciting in these piles. Uh, so we're going to leave all that behind. And our books that we're completely done with, we can't get any recipes out of them anymore, we can't get any skill ups out of them anymore, so all of that's going to stay behind. Uh, and then these are clothes, uh, filthy clothes, and raw materials. Pretty much the same thing. Just lots and lots of duplicates, things we're not going to use or shouldn't need. I disassembled or folded up our different uh, vehicle working machines. The um, uh, boom crane and uh, the engine crane. Um, so I had to disassemble the boom crane. I'll show you where that's at in a second. But the engine crane engine crane could fold up so that's in the uh the basket uh and that's pretty much it i loaded up all of our batteries and so on there's not really anything left in our network here uh i don't need the mini fridge or the ups don't need the cedar controls uh, i guess i got some batteries and cases i could pull but i've got so many of them now i'm not too worried about it and this is all just frames. Uh, we do have that engine, but um, I don't plan on building another base, so I can't think of a use for that. And that's pretty much it. I don't need all those frames either. So, the entire internal network's done. I don't need anything else from all the vehicles out here, so we're done out there. Uh, in the basement is our buddy. I did take time to actually get him sorted out. I gave him, uh, crafted and gave him a set of survivor gear. So he's got goggles, boots, gloves, the fire hood, and the suit. Seems he's most happy with that combo. If I try to hand him anything else to layer, he just ends up taking something off to put something else on. He doesn't want to go above that encumbrance. So he gets one piece for each position, basically. Um, so I think that'll be enough to keep him happy. I also gave him the steel spear and I gave him my old battle rifle, um, fully loaded with some extra ammo. I've turned off his ability or command to use firearms. I will just uh, give him the go every once in a while if necessary and let him go to free fire mode. Um, but for now he's restricted to using his steel spear. He's sleeping right now. We'll wake him up before we take off. So he's outfitted and ready to go. Um, this vehicle I just gave some basic items for, I uh, loaded it up with, here we'll do it this way instead, so it's got its ammo, gave it some basic tools for when I travel around, we've got the uh, rubber hose and a jerry can in case I need to gas up, we've got a toolbox, lighter, and entrenching tool, there's probably stuff I'm forgetting, but uh, we'll sort it out later. Um, also got some basic food, and it's got a good tank of water, and then some medications. This is just uh, for this vehicle specifically, so whenever I'm traveling around, I want to have these medications handy just in case. That's pretty much it. Other than that, it's uh, yeah, just what I mentioned. So go ahead and leave it alone. It's all set. You can see we've got a good amount of gas. 250 liters is way plenty for it to travel around. I would like to get some more water in it, but we'll fix that a little bit later. Um, and it's in perfect condition, so we are good to go there. Uh, that's just a junk pile. These are all junk as well, stuff that I don't need, don't want. Um, I did empty the water out, purified it, and loaded it into the tank in the RV. That's empty. I gotta decide if I'm gonna take this steel drum of gasoline. Um, I 
think what I'll do is I'll grab it and we'll waddle our way painfully over to this vehicle. <laughs> Apparently I can't stand up now. Drop right where I'm at. Oops, that's... Alright, let's load this thing into... Here to here. All right. So we've got the steel drum of spare gasoline back here. So this vehicle's got gas for months. Um, that's 450 liters of gasoline that we've got in this thing. We could take trips for weeks and not run through that much gasoline. So we are all done looking for gasoline for quite a long time. Um, so our travel vehicle is really, really well stocked. Uh, its off-road percentage kind of sucks, um, but 130 safe speed, 40% of that, the, that'd, be, uh, that'd be almost 50 miles per hour, which is plenty fast. I don't usually travel faster than that anyway. Um, and then on-road, uh, you can go faster than I would normally travel anyway as well. So our, our travel vehicle is looking awesome. Really happy about that as always. Here it is. Here's our vehicle and it's fully loaded up. Uh, going along the outside first, this is just the power armor and the UPS's for them. So they've got their own little spot on the outside for when I need to get out and get serious about something. These two are just quick grab materials, so we've got the emergency packs, uh, the folding bike, the tools, our ID cards, there's Cartsy, toolbox and hose, as well as a jerry can, some extra backpacks, a uh, bottle jack that I probably don't need anymore because I need an engine, I need the boom crane in order to lift this thing if I have to do any work on the wheels or <laughs> anything like that, so we'll take the bottle jack just in case. Actually, I should take. I'm going to take the bottle jack out of here. Let's let's throw the bottle jack in here. That would make more sense. We'll throw it over there with the. Uh... All right, we'll throw it in there with the tank of gas. That's pretty much it. So I'm just going to use these this side of the vehicle as my quick grab items. Um, working along the back. I've got raw materials for the vehicle itself. So these are all replacement materials. So we've got an extra enhanced motor, uh, casters for the various cranes and such, an extra small engine in case I do want to set one up for whatever reason, solar panels, security cameras, headlights, composite armor, all that kind of stuff. And then above that, some more. And then two spare 32-inch armored wheels, uh, just in case we blow a wheel. So we've got a couple of spares. And then this one is the frame and boom. These I would have to reassemble into the boom crane, but uh, that's not a big deal. I've got the built-in welder and uh, energy and so on, so I can just reassemble that if I need to in an emergency and then use it to lift this big, massive vehicle. And then again, some spare raw materials. All right, over here we've got the folded engine crane, just in case, and storage batteries, and storage batteries. So I've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, five fully charged batteries ready to go, just in case the energy apocalypse occurs. And we're back up to a complete charge. So we've got eight batteries installed, plus that many batteries spare that I could throw in at a moment's notice if necessary. But with the reactor and the plutonium that we've got, I don't see that as ever being necessary. But who cares? Uh, it's good to be prepared just in case. All right. So as you can see, when it's fully loaded, it did increase the mass. So it is taking into account the uh, amount of raw materials that I've loaded onto this thing. I think we were at 26,000 or so. So I think I've loaded 8,000 or so uh, mass in just raw materials and gear uh, when I loaded this thing up. So it has dropped our off-road percentage down to 48. But again, that's I'm going to use 50% roughly as my number. And it's 105 safe speed. So I could go 50, 60 miles an hour without any difficulty off-road, um, which is faster than I would normally go anyway. 
um, and then 100 on the roads. So we've got plenty, plenty of uh, maneuverability and safety for our engine. And we've got a spare electric engine just in case, or electric motor. Um, and that's really the only change I wanted to point out on this screen. So good battery. We've got 67% uh, diesel. I am on the lookout for more diesel. I would like to top that off to a full 200 um, and keep that as our reserve. We're going to try to run off the electrical as much as possible. See if those three solar arrays can uh, keep me powered up as we do our traveling and fighting in this vehicle. Um, at some point it would be nice to get those and turn those into uh, upgraded or enhanced solar arrays, but uh, it's a bit of a process and I didn't feel like doing it right now. So, other than that, nothing else has changed on this screen. And here is the arrangement. So, this space just north of me is our uh, kitchen buddy, and it's also subbing as my uh, poor man's chemistry station. So, in that space I've got a chemistry set. Um, that I can use for the uh, chemical making quality. Um, so that basically is replacing the chemistry station, uh, vehicle chemistry station that I don't need. Next above that is our kitchen unit. And again, I've just got a few items. I'm going to keep my prepped food, the quick stuff that I can eat really fast without having to sort through a massive pile of uh, food items. I'll keep in here on hand. And a pot to cook with. Below me I've got our uh, welding rig and the UPS compatible recharge station and the mounted forge. Um, nothing item wise in there. And then we come to the big piles of stuff. So I've only used out to here. This and this are empty and these back three are empty. I want to leave these back three empty as much as possible. These will be my quick drops. So when I come back from a scavenging run, I can just hop in the back and then drop stuff into these back three real quick and then take off. And then later at my leisure, I can sort them into these other piles. Uh, but basically it comes down to this is the food pile. That's not the food pile, which that is supposed to be the food pile. Why is it uh, showing me an optical cloak? Why do I have an optical cloak in my food pile? Oh, get items on the ground. Well, that would be why. All right, when I move this vehicle, I'm going to have to check behind me because there's probably stuff laying on the ground all over the damn place. Uh, let's... All right, I want to keep the optical cloak. Uh, let's actually step down here. Grab... Nope, not that one. This one, this one. All right, where and where. All right, that way I can pick up more stuff while I'm transferring around. I like that I can step into this space and access these exterior compartments as well. Um, it's helpful. There's, I think this one I can't get to, and this one I can't get to uh, from the inside because these I can't step into and these I can't step into. Uh, but otherwise I can reach just about every other exterior one uh, from the inside of the vehicle, which is convenient. Okay, let's... Uh, Check this again. Grab those steel platings, drop those into our raw material pile. All right, we're getting pretty close to maxing out our raw material. So back to what I was pointing at. All right, so this pile here is our food pile. So if I look north of me, you can see here, oops, it's all the various raw materials for food. Um, I'm going to start chewing through a bunch of these cans and boxes and stuff. Uh, to cut down on the size of this pile and just rely on my preserved foods uh, just to make it simpler. I don't really need all of this kind of variety. Um, so I'm going to start eating a bunch of this stuff as I can. Uh, below that, this space and this space are crafting raw materials. So huge piles of stuff. Um, I mean, just piles and piles of stuff. Not as many as I thought, but a lot of it's pretty heavy, because some of it's a lot of pieces. Um, so it actually takes up quite a bit of space. And then the one below it, same thing, more raw materials for crafting purposes, basically. And some of them take a lot of space. Next up, to the north of me now, we've got our tools. So I probably don't need all of these now that I've got everything built into the vehicle, but we're going to carry them around with us for the moment until... Uh, I make sure that I've got everything working and that I don't run into any kind of odd issues. Then we'll pair it out later. And then directly below me here is our magazine pile. And below that is the medicine and chemicals. Um, yeah, it's all medicine and chemicals. 
pretty big pile not a lot of volume though um, so medicine here and uh, this is guns to the left you get the idea and then below me uh, I've combined a few things I've got the artifacts the CBMs and our book supply in this space here and north of that is uh, additional tools and Uh, yeah, this is tools. Uh, so these two are actually both tools. Let me take a look at the... Uh, this one's 72 and that one's 33. I can probably combine these two right here. I separated them for some reason. Now I can't remember why. Uh, if I look at that one... Yeah, just a big pile of various tools. Whoops, why do I have you up there? Hmm, that I'll have to look at. I think that's what was in my inventory originally, and I accidentally sorted it to the wrong place. So let's grab all of that. Alright, and then the other one is also tools. So I'll probably combine these two piles. Uh, so that one's at 33. Yeah, so we'll go there to there. Let's move everything. Alright, so that frees up another space. So now this space is all the tools, and this is now freed up. Okay. Um, so looking at this space that I'm standing in is the weapons. Then the space next to it is ammo and magazines. Space below are the books and the bionics and the artifacts. Off to my left, I've got the clothing and only tools are the towel and the washboard, which I consider part of the clothing pile. Uh, that I had to pare down quite a bit because a lot of this stuff is very bulky. Um, so I'm just taking things that I remember I might need to make other things with um, and raw materials with. So that's fairly bulky. Um, and then this space here is just the 200, 200 liter drum of salt water that I got out of the swamp. Just in case I need to make bleach or anything else or salt, um, I'm going to carry that around with me as well. And that's it. So we are all loaded up. So took quite a while, uh, believe me, to move the mass amounts of that stuff and sort through it and try to decide what I wanted to take or not take. Should I determine that I've forgotten something, I'll just make a trip back in the scout vehicle and load it up. The scout vehicle's got plenty of space to uh, load any remaining items, should I decide I need anything. But from now forward, too much of the stuff with all the tools I have and all the high skills that I have, it's just too easy for me to, to locate and tear stuff apart locally. Um, I don't think there'll be a need to come back for any of this stuff. That's pretty much it. The base is clear. So other than checking underneath this thing when I first move it to make sure things haven't fallen, th uh, overloaded a space and fallen onto the ground, um, we're ready to move. Now before we move, there is one last thing I decided I want to try to do. Um, we haven't done it before, and I've been loath to do it, but I think I want to give it a try, and that is some bionics. Um, the reason I've hesitated about doing it is when I created this character, he has an addictive personality, and he may become addicted to whatever painkillers I have to use uh, when I try to install the bionics. So part of the bionics process is you have to medicate yourself against the pain. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and install the, uh, the various bionics, and I'm worried that I'll become addicted to whatever painkiller I choose to use. If that happens, we're going to have to spend some time here in the uh, base before I take off again. We'll have to uh, sweat out the addiction, go, go cold turkey, and uh, make sure we're okay before we take off. So that's why I've been kind of hesitating. Secondarily, I've been wanting to wait until we get a good supply of various bionics, and I'm kind of unhappy that so far we haven't found a single laboratory to go into on our map. I mean, we've explored a pretty good amount of this map, not one laboratory anywhere on the map. Um, and that's a big thing. So we found some good ones in some of the uh, zombies that we've butchered up, some in the banks that we've uh, gone and broken into. And I think we've got enough that I want to go ahead and do it. Um, for two reasons. One, uh, 
uh, it will give us some useful abilities. But two, this is a tutorial video, and it is one of the other major check marks I wanted to mark off uh, to show people and give an example of. So we're going to go through that process. If we become addicted, we become addicted, and we'll just have to deal with it. Um, I've done what I can to um, get us prepared, and the last thing we need to do before I actually do any installations of the bionics is finish reading up the last book I have to raise my first aid skill. You want your first aid to be as high as possible whenever you're installing or removing bionics. So I can get one more level of first aid out of the first aid book that I've got. So we're going to do that right now. And then we are going to figure out which bionics to install. So, this is the book, The Guide to Advanced Emergency Care. And um, we're at 92 focus. Let's, let's do that up here. And let's turn on our stereo. That way we got some tunes to jam to. And let's eat some junk food. Let's have... I'm going to look at the joy column here, and anything that's not alcohol related, <laughs> we're going to have a bit. All right, there we go. Toastums. There's our strawberry toastums. Got to have some strawberry toastums, and usually candy and things. No alcohol, please. All right, chocolate bar is good. One more page. Uh, what else we got? Marshmallows are good. I have some potato chips. And I think that's good enough. And we're also full. Okay. So if we check our morale, there's our morale. We're a total morale of plus 80, which is going to give us. 0.66 focus per minute that passes, so our focus is already rising. And uh, as we pass time, that'll continue rising until those benefits start to decay, which won't take very long, so we're going to take advantage of it while we can. All right, let's read our Advanced Emergency Gear book, and that focus number is about to drop. All right, and there we go. First aid level 8, and we can no longer use this book. We're just going to leave it behind. It's gray color, meaning we can't use, we don't need it for learning any recipes or having it available either. So we'll leave that there. And hungry and thirsty. Oh, I'm just kind of piling through some of the odd items in here, trying to clean up some of these. So let's eat the bag of seeds. Just to make my list a little smaller. Um, and nachos would be good. Okay, so we're full and slaked. Our focus is still down a bit, but that's fine. A lot of these benefits are going to start disappearing here pretty soon. That negative for reading that advanced book will also disappear. So that is the first part of it. Um, we might have to wait until next episode in order to actually do all of the installations. Um, let me see here. Let me talk a bit about the process, and then we'll save the actual installation process for the next episode, and then we'll take off in our uh, vehicle probably next episode as well. But uh, let me kind of describe the process. So when installing Bionics, and let's look at our Bionics pile real quick. Actually, that would be a good thing. So we've got a bunch of Bionics here. Um, let's go ahead and grab one of each just to get them out of this. Oops. Big list here. Uh, where are the 
Should be a big pile of... Um, there they are, power storage CBMs. And I was wondering where they all went to. Just barely over our limit. Alright, that's fine. So, we got a big pile of CBMs. Actually, let me turn off the stereo here. How are we doing for energy? Ah. So we could run the stereo full time and not drain any energy off of those, uh, well, during the daytime at least, energy, any energy off the arrays. Okay, so we take a look at the CBM pile. We've got a pretty good number of them. Um, there are a lot more than this in the game, and there's several that I would really like to get that we haven't seen yet, uh, a bunch of high-level ones that we really reliably need to go into labs in order to find. But I think we've got enough that I could get a benefit out of that I want to go ahead and make an attempt to get some installed. So the way this works is you have a bionic screen that you can go to. That's this. You hit the P key to bring this up with the default keyboard settings. And right now I have no bionics installed. Zero active and zero passive. Once we get some installed, these lists will populate and we'll be able to turn on active bionics and passive will just give us their benefits. But in order to do this, we have to get them installed. And the way that works is you have to medicate yourself with painkillers if you don't have any other way of um, blocking pain. And when we take a painkiller, you'll see an effect here that says painkiller. And as time passes, the painkiller will start to take effect and it'll have a number next to it in brackets. And you have to get that number to 10. 10 is the magic number. Um, so you have to take enough painkiller to get that number to 10 once it hits 10, then you can do the installation. And then you just activate the Bionic, say yes, you want to install it. It'll warn you about how, how much, it'll warn you about the danger. So if I go here and tell it to install uh, the Blood Analysis CBM, it tells you you need to take painkillers first. Um, but then it'll give you a percentage based on your skills, um, the tools you're using, and the difficulty factor of that particular Bionic. Um, and you have to decide whether you want to make the attempt or not. Then it just rolls dice whether it succeeds or fails. So the reason I raised my uh, first aid skill is because first aid is the primary skill that's used to improve your chances to succeed. Then there's electronics next, followed by mechanics. So I've got all three of those fairly high. So I've got eight, ten, and not, or eight, ten, and eight. Those are pretty good numbers. Um, and you also want to raise your intelligence as high as you can before you do it. So we're going to go grab a few other items uh, to try to boost our intelligence up temporarily. So I don't remember which pile they're going to be in, but uh, oops, we'll set this to all. And we'll say Adderall. I want to get some Adderall. Um, set that to my inventory. Actually, I can't carry anything right now. Let's drop all this stuff outside real quick. Alright, let's get our stamina back so this will stop making that noise. Okay, back to this list. So, I want... Uh, oh... Two Adderall, and I also want. Sure, I want my cigars. And I don't think I have. I've got coffee syrup. Do I have any coffee brewed up? Let's brew up some coffee. Uh, we'll just do four out of the powder and clean water on the hot plate. And pour it in a container. Uh, uh, a couple plastic bottles will do. Okay, so we've got 
got uh, Adderall. I got too much medicine from that other pile I picked up. Alright, don't need that. Don't need... Actually, I'm going to keep that for the moment. Okay, now we're all ready. So, talk about a few things. <laughs> um, I was talking about intelligence. So, we need to do a temporary boost of our intelligence. So, the order we're going to do this in is we're going to be taking some painkillers. Then you have to wait a short bit, like 30 minutes, for the painkiller full effect to kick in. Check your percentage. Make sure you're over 10. If you are, you can then do the surgery. That's the point where you want to do the intelligence boosting. So, you want to drink some coffee... Uh, take a hit of Adderall, smoke a cigar, things like that. Things that will give you a temporary intelligence boost. Push that number as high as you can temporarily. With the boosted intelligence plus your skills, then when you do, go to do the surgery, you'll have a better chance to install successfully. Um, and this is really, really critical if you're ever trying to remove bionics. So if you ever go into that part of the game where you've got to get rid of a broken or negative bionic, uh, it's really critical that you do all of this very carefully because you can flat out kill yourself with a botched removal of a bionic. Um, you'll take so much damage, you'll flop over dead. So take it seriously, be really careful, get your skills as high as you can, for those three in particular, and then boost your intelligence before you try to remove that bionic. Um, I think we'll be fine, though. We've got high skills. We're going to be able to really push the intelligence up because I've got stats through skills running, and we've done so much work with our skills that uh, our intelligence is 16 before I've even started taking drugs to boost it. So we'll probably hit 20 or so, and we should have some pretty good numbers. Um, so I'm not too worried about that part of it. Um, the other things you need, uh, I think actually that's it. So it's a little more complicated for removal. When you're removing bionics, you do need a scalpel. You need some kind of a fine cutting tool. But the CBM installations have their own nano factory type kits that uh, do most of the surgery for you. So you don't need that kind of stuff, I don't believe. So I think we are just about ready to go. Uh, I want to talk briefly about some of these CBMs. And then next episode, we'll actually try it and do the installations. So we've got quite a few different types here. Um, let me go grab the last group. Those. I'm going to do all 22 of those. So, uh, yeah. I can't quite carry all of them. Drop. That and that. Okay. All right. While technically there's no limit to how many CBMs you can install, the power storage CBMs are infinite. They only t they don't take up any spaces. They don't have any function other than increasing the amount of power that you're allowed to store up for use in your CBMs. Um, so you can put any number of power storage CBMs in. All of these other ones, though, while there isn't technically a limit in the current implementation, um, there is a usability limit in that the interface, the screens that you're using, really can't reliably handle more than maybe 30. Kind of depends a bit, I think, on what size font you're using. I might, because I've raised the font size on these uh, episodes you're seeing for people to view a little easier on smaller screens, I may not be able to use that many. So that's another reason I've been holding off. I wanted to make sure I got the right ones installed. So I'm not going to install every single one of these, but I'm going to install a number of them that I think would be kind of cool to use and test out. All the storage CBMs are going in. That'll give me 2200 power available um, once it's fully charged up. It's 100 per standard power storage and then 250 for the Mark II upgraded version. I don't have any of those yet. And then we're going to install a number of these other ones that are pretty cool. And uh, we'll kind of test them out as uh, once we get them installed. Um, and I'll go through them as we get them installed. But there's a couple in particular I'm really kind of excited to try to see how well they do. So I think it'll be fun. But we're going to bring this episode to a close. We're running a little long. So next episode, look forward to self-surgery. We're going to do some CBM installation finally. Let's see if we can get addicted to some painkillers and uh, go into withdrawals and just huddle in a corner of our base here for a week 
while we sweat out the withdrawals. So, good times. Hope to see you then. As always, please hit the like, comment, subscribe. It really is important. Um, it helps the channel metrics, lets the Google search bots uh, point our channel to poke people uh, a little more reliably so we can bring new players into the game and uh, they can learn how great this game is. So, I've also got my Discord channel linked below. Love to talk to you there. We've got a growing community of folks having a good time. I try to keep everybody involved and updated on what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. So, you're welcome to join me there and have a great apocalypse. Bye-bye. <laughs>